Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning. Um, we have a couple of things, well, I have several things that I need to share with you this morning uh, from our congregation, <clears throat> uh, from the family of this church. Uh, first of all, Fern Price's son has died um, on Thursday, and there will be a memorial service for him on August the 13th. George Meisner is not here the, uh, this morning because he had surgery this week and uh, he uh, had a lot of reaction uh, to the skin. That is a lot of blood clotting and all. He didn't want to scare you. Um, we also got news this week that Ellen Broombach's been in the hospital a whole week. I didn't know about it, but she now has lung cancer. And so the may uh, institute the need to be in hospice. We're not sure. Um, also, Shelby wants to thank everyone for all the many cards and best wishes that you've been sending to her. Uh, that's been a big, big help, a lift up. And uh, so we really appreciate that. Now, there was something, yes. Oh, good, good. And we're so glad to see you back. Yes, yes. And that's what Shelby's waiting to be able to do too, is be back. Um, we had a very special event uh, this week in this church. In fact, in this room, uh, it did not look at all like it does right now, uh, but it was the VBS um, session for uh, Monday through Thursday. And I'd ask Faye if you'd come and talk about it, please. Well, as you can see, we left a few of our decorations up for you so that you could enjoy this morning. We have some photographs over here as well that you can take a look at. We averaged about 29 kids a night that were here. They were originally uh, greeted by Kelly Huff, who took care of our registration for us. And then Pastor did our opening for us in the evening. Captain Gordon, along with his mom, Annette, and one of our returning VBS students, Cece, ran our preschool class. Then we had Heather Krieger and Ashley Krieger who had kindergarten through second grade. Butch had the third, fourth, and fifth graders and he had Glenn helping him a few evenings. In crafts, it was my daughter, April, and we had a returning VBS girl, Jada, who also helped with our crafts. Games were run by two of our returning VBS, my granddaughter, Jackie, and one of her girlfriends, Adriana. They had a blast. Um, we were very busy each and every night. The kids were constantly moving from place to place, and I, I do believe they had a really a lot of fun. We had food each evening that was done by both uh, Pam, Kay, Denise, and Lori. There was all kinds of wonderful things. We actually do have some leftovers this evening. And after church is over, we have leftover ice cream sandwiches that were donated by the Exeter Dairy Queen. So we were very thankful for those. The kids really enjoyed that. And on the last day, we did slip and slide in water balloons. So we got everybody to cool down in this heat. It was perfect. Also, the children wanted to say thank you for all of the donations and everything that the congregation did to make this year's VBS such a success. They each got a shirt. Um, they each Jordan, had such a wonderful time. Yeah, <laughs> I apologize. I wanted to wear mine this morning, but we didn't get laundry done this weekend. We yeah. kind of <laughs> had another crazy weekend. So, but yeah, each one of the kids got one of these wonderful shirts. They loved it. They wore them every night and we really, really had a good time. We did a food drive. You can see here what the kids have collected for us. So we'll be taking this over and dropping this off this week. But again, um, the children were having a really good time and just wanted to say thank you to everybody for the donations, the help, and everything that you did to help make Vacation Bible School such a huge success this year. Uh, hey, all I did was coordinate. That's all. And Donna actually came out on Thursday, but she was smart. She came in the building away from the water and stayed dry. <laughs> Thank you. And we had a whale of a time. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they they put their whole selves into it. 
That was very good. Thank you. Okay. Let us enter into the call to worship. The Lord is our salvation. No power in the universe. Our God will not be ignored. His mercy is extended to us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Now we sing that at the beginning of every of our worship services. How much of that is true? For me, every word because I do hear the brush of angels' wings as people talk with one another, as they share what's going on in their lives. I do see glory on each face. Sometimes you come in and you're carrying the load that you carried this whole week, and you get here and it's like it evaporates and you, you gain a smile and you and start to enjoy the presence of the Lord as well as each other. So we do mean that when we sing this. Our first hymn is, Lord, I, I lift your name on high. Now, you're going to ask that you play the hymn through once before us, and then we're going to sing it three times. So let us stand. <laughs> Christ is with us. Lord God, in your mercy, let us confess our sins unto God. 
Lord, we often allow ourselves to drift away from the life we're asking us to live. Too often, we have not realized how the choices we make either cut us off from you or destroy our witnessing for you. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the strength and courage to always be faithful and true witnesses of your love for us. This we ask in Jesus' name, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Let us lift up to God our private personal prayer requests during this moment of silence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Since we are justified in our faith in Jesus Christ alone, through him may we find peace with God and one another. May be seated. Our special music today is uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We'll sing at the end of the service. I have to learn how to read. Okay. Uh, the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you are trying to say to us this day. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Hosea, first chapter. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, go, take for yourself a wife of who, of who is a whore and have the children with her. For this land plays at being a whore for forsaking me. So he went to Gomer. She conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to him, name him Jezreel. For in a little while, I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the northern kingdom, which were, but no longer are, my people. On that day, I will break the bow of Jehu in the bow, no, yeah, the bow of Jehu 
in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Name her Loruama, Lo for I will no longer have pity on the northern kingdom, nor forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them as the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow, sword, war, horses, or horsemen. When Gomer had weaned, Loru Amma, she conceived and bore the second son. The Lord said, name him Lo Ami, for the northern kingdom is not my people, and I am not their God. Yet the number of the people of the northern kingdom shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. Yet is the place where I said to them, you are no longer my people, and you shall no longer be called the children of the living God. The word of the Lord. Uh, please join me in reading Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your people. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sins. Restore us, O God of our salvation and put away your indignation toward us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let us hear what the Lord God will say, for he will speak peace to his faithful people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear and respect him. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, Righteousness and peace will embrace each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. Righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give us what is good. Righteousness will proceed and make a path for his steps. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Sometimes the good news is brief, as is this morning. From Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 29th verse. He heals and strengthens those who are ill, weak, and tired. May God add his blessing here, his holy word this morning. May we understand its truth yet for us this very day. Now, for the past several weeks, I've been talking about disease, dis-ease, and burdens. We looked at all the different kinds of things that can happen to human beings, both in the body, the mind, and the soul, that brings dis-ease, or disease, or burdens. And I'm pretty sure that all of us have experienced that in some form or another. It may be something simple, like a cold, or it may be something life-threatening. In all the cases, we've all suffered some form of dis-ease or burden in our lives. But beginning this week, I want to talk about the other side of that, and that is how do we overcome it? How do we overcome diseases and burdens? How are we healed? Now, we've looked at a couple of biblical characters that we look at at various points in our studies together, thinking about Paul and his thorn in the side. Now, what did Paul want? Paul wanted to get rid of it. He wanted to get rid of the disease that that thorn in his side caused him. But God said, no, I will help you endure that disease, but I will not take it away from you because it helps you remain dependent and calling upon me. Rather than thinking, you've got it made, you're the one in control. You're the one who wants to teach the people what they need to know. So there are times when we have diseases that remain, that we have to live with. I'm a diabetic. I have to live with the fact that I am a diabetic. I have to watch what I eat. I have to avoid certain things. Like I have now a thing on my phone which has a sensor here which tells me what my blood sugar is at any time and the thing is that really i've learned from this is your blood sugar doesn't react immediately so you might eat something check your blood sugar and you're okay and then all of a sudden it's through the roof that happens to me when i have ice cream What do I love the most in life to eat? Ice cream. Well, any different kind, yes. But it's interesting to watch what happens to that symbol, that, that graph of where my blood sugar is. I'll eat it, zoom, goes through the roof. So I have then learned that I do not eat banana splits anymore. <laughs> Yeah, the bananas were okay. But not only the ice cream, but all the coverings on top of it, the toppings, were not good for me. And that's what I'm learning from this. Now, I've been taking my blood sugar for years. You stick your finger, you put it on a little strip in a gauge, and it tells you how much your blood sugar is. One of the other things I've learned from the sensor is there's a difference between your blood sugar and your body sugar, what's in your muscles, that it takes a lot longer to get there where it does the most damage than it does when you're reading just the blood. So I'm beginning to learn how to keep it below that danger point. It's work, folks. It's not something where I've been healed. That's where I've been learned how to take care of myself. And I've got a lot more to learn, I'm sure, because I'm just at the very beginning of this. Now, I also have 
a heart problem. I have 10 stents in my heart. At one point, I understood that you could only have eight. That after eight, you had to have open heart surgery. You couldn't just put a stent in. Do you know what number nine was? It was down the back of the heart, the widow maker. I was walking down from the parsonage to the church and I was exhausted walking downhill. So I knew I was in deep trouble. But miracles of miracles. You can have 10 stents or 12 or as many as you need. Now, I ask you this. Where did the knowledge for those kinds of dealings with my two diseases come from? Well, doctors, scientists. But where did that come from? From God, yes. He's the one who created us human beings to be able to learn, to be able to study things and get from one thing a brand new understanding of something else. He showed us how to do certain healing. Now, if we look at the story of Jesus in the Gospels, we see more times when he simply healed the person completely. The blind could see. Those who were lame could walk. Those who had diseases that were no longer able to be in the presence of other people. He healed them so that they could be with their families and friends once again. He did that directly. He did it completely. So why not Paul? Why aren't we all who believe in Jesus Christ going to live to be 300? No, thank you. No, thank you. How about just a hundred? Yeah. Because we human beings have messed up his original plan. We're the ones who chose to do things differently. We're the ones who ate things we should not eat, drank things we should not eat. Do things we should not do. Partake of things that aren't really good for us. But they taste really good. It's interesting as I watch people who finally understand that they can do certain things to improve their health. And there's always two reactions I've seen. One, the person becomes faithful in taking their medicines and doing the things they need to do, exercise, whatever the thing is that's going to help them improve and be better. They're committed to it. They will not avoid it. They work at it. And then there are other people who will do it as long as they feel off. But once they feel better, oh, I can do it by now. I don't need that medicine anymore. And you see them crash again, especially in mental illness cases where people say, oh, I'm doing fine. I don't need to take that medicine anymore. And so they don't take it anymore. And they hit the pit again. So what is healing? What is God doing for us that heals us? Well, I think there's two different things. One we saw with Jesus, completely healed, took away the problem, no longer an issue. The person was healed, was no longer any negative for them. But there are other situations where he gives us the possibilities of doing what we should do and leaving it up to us to choose whether we're going to do it or not. So he's put it in our hands in a certain way. Now, 
one of the things that I've noticed in dealing with a lot of people in, in all the different churches I've been a part of over my life, there's those who get, get that, that it's their responsibility to go to the doctor, to take the medicine. That's their job that God has given them to maintain the body that he's given them. But then there's other people who make other choices. I, I notice that mostly among men, sorry guys, who, I can do it. You know, I can do it. I don't need to take that medicine. I'm fine. Oh, I got a little pain in the chest. I don't need to go to the doctor. Yeah. And then I have their funeral. They don't listen to their body. The body's telling them something. He's, it's telling each of us something. And it's our responsibility to react in the best way we can with God's help. He's provided us with physicians, medicines, and other kinds of things. Sometimes the healing is complete. And other times it's like Paul's. We have to live with it and let people see that we're living with it and see that we have our faith in God and therefore able to live with it, whereas others would just simply give up and it would be the end. May the Lord add his blessing to his message today. We had several concerns at the beginning of our church. Are there uh, service? Are there any others that we need to lift up today? Yes, Bernie. Faith. Okay, yes. Karen and Tom. Thanks. Are there any others? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the message? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, don't we all wish it would be instantaneous? Yes, boys. And there are brothers and sisters over there. Okay, good. Prayer for Emma. Yes. Any others? So we go before God in prayer. Gracious God, you've opened yourself to us. Not only did you create us and give us the lives we have, but then you opened your arms to us, provided us with your love, and sought our return to you, our communications with you, that we might receive your blessings and make use of them in the way that is most appropriate and most effective. There are so many people that we know that need you in this moment. They've suffered loss of family members or they've learned things that means that the loved one is not going to be with them much longer. We've also heard of people who are struggling mightily with the, what they are up against. And for them, we ask that your 
Holy Spirit's power fill them and provide all that they need in this life, especially. We've also seen that it's not just individuals that need your help, but communities of faith, as well as friends and neighbors, family members, that none of us can make it on our own in this world. And that's why you've offered to be with us, to walk with us step by step, to empower us when we need it, and to lift us up when we cannot make it on our own. May we completely trust in you. May we not try to do that which only you can do for us, but do what you ask us to do, to be faithful and filled with prayer and read your word daily. Lord, help us be all that you want us to be, that we might feel at ease in your presence, at home with you, that no, we would know that we are where we're supposed to be. As we think about these friends and loved ones, we turn their situations over to your love, your care, and your keeping. We step forward to do whatever we can to help and use us in whatever way you wish. All of this we ask in the name of him who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We only have two announcements this morning that affects the whole church. That is Tuesday night, the revitalization committee's meeting. And on Wednesday uh, is the lifeline screening here in the church. Are there any other announcements we need to share? Yes, Lou. Yes, but you're at the beach. Okay, good, good. Yes, Dan. Could you go to the mic, Dan? You're 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 talking a long time, so it'd be helpful. Sorry about that. Uh, on July 12th, our scholarship committee met. Uh, as far as I know, our fund is unique in churches in this area, and we've been able to do a lot of good work over the years. This year, we had a record six applicants, and they were all strong applicants. And a particular benefactor stepped forward and made it possible for us to give awards to all six of these fine young people Fantastic. who came through and have worked for this congregation. Their awards will be presented next Sunday during our church worship service. And I hope you can be there and I hope you can spread the word. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yes. It's always a big celebration in this church when we look at our children that are now becoming adults and now moving on into new careers of their own. And uh, we're glad we we're able to provide some support for them, a way to say thank you for being part of us. Any others? Yes. I'm going to start the process now. I will get you a newsletter article about this. Um, <laughs> if anybody knows uh, anyone who is uh, 13 
or is going to be 13 before the end of the year, uh, we have confirmation class, which is open to any anyone who believes. It doesn't even have to be a member of this church. I will teach anyone about, about Jesus and the church. Um, also, uh, we had a wonderful experience with Vacation Bible School that we really want to keep going. So, um, although I'm not sure this is my thing, but I'm going to announce it anyway, because I'm one of the teachers. Um, Sunday school, okay? We want to have Sunday school in this church. We want this church to be packed with kids. We had 29 kids in here for Vacation Bible School, and it was a really good time. Uh, I would love to see like half that many, you know, uh, in church on a regular or semi-regular basis in our Sunday school classes. We have teachers that are willing. Uh, Kelly Huff is willing, Bobby, Bobby Moore is willing, I am willing. So we have willing teachers. We need students. So reach out, family, friends. Again, I don't care if they're not members of this church. Come on in on a Sunday morning. You're welcome. Everybody's welcome. Um, their kids are welcome. So uh, please spread the word about that. But I will get you the confirmation article. <laughs> oh, and we are beginning Sunday school with a rally day on September the 18th. Uh, are we doing picnic? Is that the plan? Uh, yeah. Okay, I believe we're doing a picnic. So uh, there you go. <laughs> on the 18th, September. <laughs> anything else all right while we're singing the final hymn what a friend we have in jesus today uh, we'll get the ice cream coming out and uh, it'll be ready for us at that time so we stand Thank you. 
did forget one thing, and that is that um, Mr. Haller is coming home from rehab today. Uh, that's why Ruthie's not with us this morning, uh, but uh, we're very glad. Uh, they were not, uh, she was able to be there, but he was not able to be at the wedding of Quinn Haller last night, uh, which we were able to be there and had a good time. Uh, so we wish them all the best in peace. May the Lord bless and keep you. May you go forth from this place with him walking beside you. Go now in his peace. Amen. And remember the ice cream. Oh, yeah. Good idea. No, not me. Nope. <laughs>